what's up everybody welcome back to the channel for another action figure review and today we're taking a look at the brand new mezco 112 collective marvel's classic green goblin and man i've got to say i'm very hyped up about this figure and i know not everybody is i feel like this figure isn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea but for me personally i just love old school classic kind of goofy looking marvel characters so <laughs> i don't know man i've got to say i'm just very excited about this figure and i know that i haven't reviewed spider-man yet i will leave eventually but to be honest with you I was more excited about Green Goblin so when this figure came in it cut in line and got in front of Spidey but eventually I will do Spider-Man I'm looking forward to that figure too but not quite as much as Green Goblin but yeah man I'm excited so let's go ahead and get right into it starting off with the packaging I freaking love this box art I think it looks so cool First off, there's a bunch of really dope looking artwork right here. We have Green Goblin on the front, and then in the back we have like a bunch of classic comic book panels, you know, of awesome like Green Goblin artwork. So cool. And then on the side of the box we have another shot of Green Goblin, and again we have like all these classic panels as a backdrop. Same thing going on here. And this Green Goblin artwork is the same as what's on the front, but then the panels in the background are different. So that is really dope. Same thing over here. And you know, another thing I love about this box, aside from the artwork, is that it's not huge. Mezco is known to like <laughs> ship their figures in these big ass boxes. Thankfully, that's not the case with this. And I know there's a bunch of accessories in there, so it's cool to see they were able to pack everything into a smaller compact box, you know? So it's not a hassle to store. But enough about this beautiful box. Let's go ahead and get Osborne out and take a look. So here we have the Green Goblin right out of the box. And yeah, man, I think this guy turned out pretty dope. I like what we have going on here. Now, it doesn't necessarily, you know, blow me away like Doctor Doom and Morbius, but I do think it's a really cool figure. I love this bright, vibrant green that they used on the arms and the legs and the heads. I, I just love it because, like, when it comes to old school villains, like, they always have these bright colors, like, these in-your-face designs, and then, you know, they kind of look goofy, and it's hard to take them serious, but then at the same time... You know, they make life very difficult for the heroes. And I think that Green Goblin is like one of the best examples of that. You know, like he's probably one of the goofiest looking supervillains. But then on the other side of that, he's one of the greatest supervillains. Like Green Goblin, Norman Osborn is like, he's one of the worst. And he's made Spider-Man's life like complete hell. Like, he's such a dope villain, you know, but then he looks silly. So, I think that Mezco did a good job of capturing that whole vibe. And, yeah, I like it, man. One common complaint I've heard about this figure is that he's a little too skinny. And, you know, I could kind of agree with that. I do feel like this figure would have benefited from, like, maybe the chest being a little bit more muscular and the arms being a little bit more muscular. But at the same time... I don't know if I could sit here and call this figure completely inaccurate because of that because you know if you look at like artwork throughout the years Green Goblin sometimes does look a lot skinnier and yes sometimes he looks super muscular but I've never been a big fan of the super muscular version of Green Goblin I like him to look a little bit more normal and on the skinny side it just kind of works with the whole Goblin theme. But even with that said I think this figure should have been just a little bit bigger in the upper body area. But, you know, it doesn't really bother me that much, but I could definitely understand that criticism. And I think that Mezco handled the whole, like, scaly arms and legs pretty well. Like, with Green Goblin, I was never really sure what that was on his arms. You know, is it chain mail, or is it just, like, scales to go with the whole Goblin thing, or, <laughs> like, both, kind of, you know? But either way, I think that Mezco handled it pretty well. I think it looks good and everything. Uh, this purple overlay, it's like some kind of pleathery material, I guess you could call it. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think it looks good. It's a nice contrast to the, the material they used on the arms and legs. I just, I, I get scared whenever they use this material because I feel like it'll peel over time. But we'll see. But yeah, I think this is a good looking figure. Definitely captures the whole vibe of the character. And I like that a lot. Oh, you know, I, I put the, the purse thing on here, but if you take it off, let me go ahead and give you a look at that. I just think he looks a lot better with that bag on there. It's a little plain right here without it, so I definitely prefer to, to keep the the man purse on him. I think it, it makes the figure look a lot better, honestly, but yeah, like that looks good. I do feel like the head may be a little bit big, but again, that feels accurate to Green Goblin. It's like a big, crazy mask, you know? But yeah, I like this figure. I think it came out dope. 
And I think that Mezco did a really great job with the details on Green Goblin, especially with the head sculpts. He came with three different Goblin head sculpts and all of them are freaking amazing. But starting off with this one here, this is the one that's on the body when you take the figure out of the box and just look at that. To me, that's a perfect looking Green Goblin head sculpt. He's got that awesome sinister smile, the big old white eyes, the crazy Goblin hat, <laughs> the big ears, and then I love the different shades of green that we see on the face. Got some light green, some dark green. It looks really nice. So they killed it with the head sculpts. And then moving down to the body, for the torso here, it does have like this pleathery type of material for the purple. And you know, I think it's okay, but I'm a little concerned how well it'll hold up, you know? Like, who knows if it'll peel eventually. Luckily, it's in an area that doesn't get that much movement. So, you know, I don't think that you're gonna be creasing this up too much. So maybe maybe it'll kind of last, but I don't know. This material just makes me nervous, but I think it looks good and it works well on the figure. And then for the arms and legs, you know, Green Goblin does have like this weird armory scale effect on the arms and legs. I was never sure if it was like chain mail or what the hell it was, but um, you know, it does have like a scaly type of look. And I think that Mezco did a pretty good job with that. You could see that the effect is there. It definitely looks like scales. So that's cool. And then he does have his uh, little goblin purse, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> and this looks good too. You could open it up and put stuff in there. Right now there's just like a piece of foam in there to kind of give it some size. But yeah, that looks good. And I think the, uh, you know, the bag is well sculpted. And if you flip it around here, it does have like a buckle and then an extra strap. So if you want to have that on the front, you can. But I just like to kind of keep it simple like this. So... I think that looks better. And then the the forearms and the hands are really well sculpted too. You could see some nice detail in there. And then he does have this belt that kind of shifts around so you could put it wherever you need to. And then we have some more of the goblin scales on the legs. And then the feet are really well sculpted too. You could see some nice detail in the boots. And then he does have his, you know, funny pointed shoes. So yeah, I think that Mezco did a pretty nice job with the details on him, especially on the head sculpt though, man. They killed it with the head sculpt. So yeah, I like what we have going on in this figure. I think everything looks nice and clean. The stitching on the soft goods is pretty well hidden. And I think for the most part, the figure looks really good. And like with all Mezco figures, Green Goblin comes with a crazy amount of accessories. We're gonna take a look at those, starting off with the head sculpts because the Goblin heads are definitely my favorite thing about this figure. They did such a great job on all three of them. This is the one that we've already looked at. It's just your Green Goblin with a crazy sinister smile, and I love it. And then for the second head sculpt, we have Green Goblin just smiling once again, happy as can be, but this time around, he's showing some teeth. And yeah, man, look at that. Such a great looking head sculpt. So evil and just like, <laughs> just insane, you know? And then for the final Goblin head sculpt, we have Green Goblin just laughing uncontrollably, probably thinking about that time that he murdered Gwen Stacy and he's just getting a good chuckle out of it. But man, once again, this is a great looking head sculpt. All three of them are amazing. I don't know if I really have a favorite, but all of them are just so well done. They're just perfect Green Goblin head sculpts. This one here isn't quite as clean as the other two. There's a little mark on the cheek, but aside from that, all three of the heads are very clean and well done and just perfectly sculpted in my opinion. And then he does come with two unmasked head sculpts and I love both of these because they do a great job of conveying the different sides of Norman Osborn's character. Starting off with this one, you can see that his facial expression is very serious, he looks very cold and calculating and very under control. And I just think they did a great job sculpting this. It's like the perfect looking Norman Osborn head sculpt. Look at the details on there, check out the waves and the hair, and just everything about this looks perfect to me. And just look at him, man, he looks so under control. And then as you could see with this head sculpt, he looks completely insane. It looks like he's about to just, <laughs> just unravel completely. It doesn't look like he's in control whatsoever. Like, I just love the facial expression on this, and I love that he came with the two head sculpts to convey these different aspects of his personality. And this one is just as well sculpted as the previous. You could see there's some great details around the eyes. 
Again, we have the hair, and just again, the facial expression is perfect for an unhinged Norman Osborn. And then of course, he comes with a bunch of different hands, starting off with a pair of fists. We have a set of open relaxed hands, and then a set of open dramatic hands. And then we have a set of pointer finger hands. He could use one of these hands to point at Spider-Man and laugh after he kills his girlfriend, but not before he uses the other hand to point and laugh at Spider-Man after he gets his girlfriend pregnant. And then he comes with a set of pumpkin bomb gripping hands. And then we get a set of gripping hands that look like they're specifically designed to hold on to his uh, batarangs, I guess. Is that what you'd call them? Even if they're for Green Goblin? I don't know. But yeah, these hands can hold on to them very nicely. And he comes with three of these things and they do look really good. And then he also has one that kind of looks like it's being thrown. And this effect fits right into this hand as well. You could see that it kind of wraps around the thumb and the hand and stuff. So... That works out really nice. It's cool that he has hands specifically designed to hold these small little weapons. And then for the final set of hands, we get these here. As you can see, for the right side, we have an open hand. And then for the left side, we have a gripping hand. And what kind of sucks about this is that we only get one gripping hand. And this gripping hand is used to hold on to the handle on the glider. So as it is right now, he could only hold it with his left hand. That That is kind of limiting in my opinion. I would have preferred that he came with two of these gripping hands. This hand does have a purpose and we'll look at that in just a second. But uh, yeah, I do wish that he came with two gripping hands like this. And then next up, we get this really dope looking goblin mask. And man, I love this. This is so cool. You could definitely get some cool photos out of something like this. And I think that's what this weird gripping hand was intended to be used for. Like it seems like it's supposed to grip onto the mask right there, but it does kind of have like a loose grip. It, it, it all fits well, but it's just not a very tight grip as you could see. But thankfully there's other ways that you could use this hand to grip onto the mask. I like it like this actually. Put his hands inside the loop there and have him like talking to it. Oh, that's dope. I love that. Oh man, that is so cool. This is a great. And then he does come with these three like throwing effects, I guess you could call them. I'm not 100% sure how to describe them, but you can make it look like he's throwing these various objects. This is the first one here, as you can see. He's got the classic like green goblin pumpkin bomb, and there's like a little bit of a flame in the back of it, then some clear plastic that kind of bridges it to the hand, and it's stuck in the hand there. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's very sturdy in there, and it looks cool. And even though I think the pumpkin bomb is nice and everything, I would say that it's probably the most boring out of the three different objects that he has like this. See what I mean by the pumpkin being the most boring? Check out the next one here. We have a damn frog. <laughs> and I just love that. I love the idea of Green Goblin reaching into his bag and throwing a frog at Spider-Man. That is so much fun. That's such a cool accessory and it's it just so goofy and crazy, you know, but... Yeah, they did a good job with this. And again, we have that like clear plastic that bridges it to the hand so he could have a sturdy grip on it. <laughs> Man, that's that's really cool. And this is probably my favorite out of the three. As you can see, we have Green Goblin throwing a ghost. Look at that. That is so cool. Just so goofy, man. Just classic Marvel. I just love the idea of Green Goblin throwing ghosts and frogs and all kinds of crazy stuff but the ghost is especially cool because it looks really goofy but you know it does something sinister <laughs> like maybe it shoots out poison gas or i don't know just explodes and kills a bunch of people who knows what the hell it does but you know it's it's got to be bad but again, this is a very cool accessory to include with Green Goblin. I love this. And then he does come with a bunch of loose pumpkin bombs. And as you can see, we get three that have like a smiling jack-o'-lantern face. And then three that have like an angry jack-o'-lantern face. And then you can see right here in the middle, we have a couple that have like some pretty cool effects on them. This one here has some like smoke coming out from the top. And then this one here has some flames coming off of it. And these things are really tiny. But yeah, these are cool. I like them a lot. You could even use them for like, you know, Halloween shots in the fall time. If you just kind of, if you need to turn them around and you just need some like, uh, you know, some regular pumpkins. That's kind of cool. But yeah, these are awesome. Perfect accessories for Green Goblin. And I love that he comes with hands that are able to hold these. So, And then for the final accessory, we get this guy here, which is some type of like magic effect or energy effect or possibly projectile coming out from his fingertip. And yeah, this is very cool. You could have it to where like Green Goblin is pointing at somebody like it's all good. 
And then he just magically murders him by surprise. So there we go. And then of course he does come with this goblin glider. And man, this thing is so dope. I love the way it looks. And the green goblin looks so awesome on there. And you know what's really cool about it is that this works as a really good display piece without taking up a bunch of space. You know, the glider isn't too big. The exhaust effects aren't too big. So you could definitely have this on your shelf just like this. And it won't take up a bunch of real estate. So that is nice. They found a good balance with the size and with the amount of space that it takes up, you know. So, it, man, this is awesome. I really, really love this. The only, you know, thing that kind of sucks about this whole situation is that he only comes with a gripping hand like this for his left side. So, you can't get him to, you know, hold it with his right hand, which is weird. It comes with a million hands, but <laughs> not like ones that you could use here. So, that's that's weird. But at least he does have the left side so you could hold on to it like that. But... Uh, aside from that, this is absolutely perfect and you're able to get him off here really easily. This unfastens and you're able to just unpeg his foot. Let's go ahead and get both sides and we'll get him off here real quick. It's really easy to take him on and off and he's on there securely when he's on. So that's really dope. But yeah, look at this, man. This is cool. Then got the exhaust effects down here. And it just looks really good. And speaking of the exhaust effects, you can take them right off. They're in there pretty securely, but you could take them off. And then you have these little things that you could plug in there to cover up those. And then they're like little fans. So like when he's flying and you don't need those hovering exhaust effects, you have these under there. So that's really dope. And then, man, I love how it's articulated. The wings move. I like the, you know, the subtle metallic look that it has. It's not like it's shiny or anything, but it does look like it's metal. And then this handle comes up and down. Look at that. That's crazy. That is so cool, man. They killed it on this glider. I really like it. And then for some size comparisons, here we have Green Goblin alongside the recently released Mezco 112 Collective Classic Comic Book Spider-Man. And then over here we have the original Mezco comic inspired Spider-Man. And damn, <laughs> he's definitely seen some better days. I don't think he's held up very well throughout the years. As you can see, there's a little bit of discoloring in the red. It seems like a little darker than what it was when I first got it. And then there's some cracking in there too. So man, I really hope that doesn't happen with the newer version. I guess time will tell. But as far as how they look next to Green Goblin, I think that both of them actually work pretty well. The original comic book version kind of comes across as like an older Spider-Man and the newer one kind of seems like a much younger Spider-Man. And I think this one works really well with this Green Goblin. They both kind of have like the same old school classic aesthetic and I think they look really good together. So I'm happy to have them both. I look forward to seeing what other classic comic book Spider-Man villains the Mezco does. I really hope they keep the same aesthetic. I know it's not for everybody, but I like it. I like kind of the older almost like goofy look of them, you know, of the older comics. I think it's very cool and I think they go together really well. And then next up, we have them alongside the Mezco Spider-Man 2099 and the Mezco Black Suit Spider-Man. And damn, I really like this Mezco Black Suit Spider-Man and it's held up pretty well. I remember I used to pose it quite a bit back in the day and the suit all still looks good. So that's a nice figure. And then here we have them alongside the Mafex Classic Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Animated Series Spider-Man. And I think he looks pretty good next to them. You could probably mix it up a little bit. And Green Goblin's a great figure and everything, but he's nowhere near as awesome as these two Mezco masterpiece figures. <laughs> on the left, we have the 112 Collective Doctor Doom, and on the right, we have the 112 Collective Morbius. I do have a review for Doom on my channel now, so be sure to check that out. And I plan on doing a review for Morbius, even though he's been out for like six months or something at this point. I just love that figure so much. I want to show it some love. So as soon as I have some time, I'm going to do a review for him. And then here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends animated series Doc Ock and the Marvel Legends classic lizard with the custom coat from Rebel 10 Customs. She always kills it with the soft goods. Be sure to check her out. I'll leave a link to her Instagram and website in the description below. Here we have them alongside the Mezco Iron Fist and Mezco Daredevil. And I really wish they would redo this Daredevil with the same material that they used on Iron Fist so that he would be a little bit more poseable. I think they could do it. They'd probably do a great job because this Iron Fist is incredible. I like this Daredevil, but can't really pose him because the material. If they just use straight up cloth with a little bit of like pipe design or whatever, I think that'd be pretty nice. And then of course, here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends, Renew Your Vows Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap. 
And then lastly, here we have them alongside the OG Toy Biz Marvel Legends Green Goblin and the Hasbro Marvel Legends Green Goblin. And man, this Toy Biz version is still so awesome. Yes, the hands look crazy, but aside from that, this figure is damn near perfect. I was playing around with it, and I was just like impressed with how good it is after all these years. I keep him on my shelf, but I don't really pick it up and play with it that often. But man, this thing is incredible. And the Legends one is okay, but I, I think they could do much better. I've never been a huge fan of this figure. It looks cool and everything but i don't like the face it doesn't feel like classic enough but uh yeah anyways it's cool to have all these different green goblins personally i do think the mezco is probably the best out of the three but i don't know i just like the classic feel that it has to it uh but seeing him next to a bunch of other figures definitely makes it feel like his head is a little too big you know <laughs> but aside from that i think he may be the best green goblin out there you know with uh, the toy biz version probably in second place like probably a very close second place i don't know but um yeah both of these figures are great but man toy biz amazing stuff and the articulation on this guy is okay there are some areas that are somewhat limited but I do think that this figure is able to do pretty much everything that you would want Green Goblin to do. So I'm not necessarily mad at it, but I do wish that some of the joints had a little bit more range. I am still having fun playing around with it, so, you know, I'm okay with it. But let's go ahead and see what we have going on, starting off here at the head. So he does have movement at the upper neck and at the lower neck. Using both of those, we get some really nice <laughs> tilt action. Look at that. That's awesome. That's perfect for Green Goblin. So he could do some creepy weirdo stuff and just look at Spider-Man like that. <laughs> and then he's able to look up to about right there, which is okay. And then he could look down to about right there. And then, of course, he could look side to side. So pretty good stuff at the head, especially with that tilt. I love that. And then for the torso, that's really where my main problem is. I think it's a little too limited. And everything just feels real tight right here. So I don't know. It just like won't move very much. But... He's able to crunch forward to about right there, which, you know, it's something, but I wish there was a little bit more going on there. And then it could go back to about right there, so not a whole lot going back either. Get a little bit of side-to-side -side action. And then you can twist on that diaphragm joint or a little bit at the waist joint. So, yeah, he's got a diaphragm joint and a waist joint, but both of them just aren't really working together very well. I feel like the waist joint is real tight. Not tight as in doesn't move, but just tight as in like everything is real compact in here. So I do wish there was a little bit more movement here at the torso. And then for the arms, he has ball joints at the shoulders and they did a pretty good job with the arms. You could get both of them up a really good amount at the same time, which is impressive. And then you could bring his arms out to the side to about right there again his shoulders are a little tight when you try to bring them up but they go up to like right there so not too bad and usually mezco figures have like somewhat of a butterfly joint but it doesn't feel like he does but let's see if we get him into some kind of punching pose or at least like a boxing pose not too bad Well, I always try to do that. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, so the arms are uh, pretty, pretty good. All things considered. I mean, without a, without a butterfly joint, I think they pretty much do some decent stuff. Yeah, so I'm not too mad at the arms. I don't know if a butterfly joint would have really worked in here anyways. But yeah, sometimes Mezco figures have a little butterfly joint, but I don't think you get much use out of them anyways. And then he does have upper bicep swivel. There we go. He has double jointed elbows to get a good bend. Look at that. And then at the wrist, he has a ball joint that has a hinge, so you could hinge it, spin it around, do whatever you need to do. And then for the legs, let's see what we have going on here. For the legs, he's able to kick to the side a really good amount. Oh, look at that. Bam. That's pretty good. Nice. And then he's able to kick forward to about right there. 
bring his leg back to about right there. And then he does have upper thigh swivel. He has double jointed knees that get a really good bend. That's good. And then he does have a boot swivel. And then at the foot, we've got the ball joint. Hey, look at that. Some pretty good movement on that ball joint. Go forward to there, come up only to right there. And then you can swivel on that as well. But uh, yeah, you know, like I said, decent articulation. I just wish there was more going on in the torso. Aside from that, you know, I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. And like I said, he's definitely fun to play with. So yeah, pretty decent articulation. Could have been better, but I'm happy with it. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think this is a really, really dope figure. Mezco did a great job on Green Goblin, and I'm very happy with the way that he turned out. And it's a huge relief to say that, because initially, I was going to pass on this guy. I did not pre-order it when it first went up, and honestly, I thought I was kind of done with the Mezco superhero stuff. But then when I started to see those first in-hand images of this figure, that's when I knew I had to have it, so I ordered it. But even then, although I was excited I was still kind of nervous that it was going to disappoint somehow but then when I opened the figure up I liked it quite a bit I didn't fall in love with it right away but I liked it so you know I was happy but then now after spending like five days messing around with this figure I've got to say at this point Man, I'm kind of in love with this figure. I think that Mezco actually killed it. He does have some imperfections. I do think the figure would have been a little bit better if he was a little more muscular. Not over the top. I don't want like a super buff Green Goblin, but just a little bit more muscles in the upper body I think would have made this figure look a little better. But as it is, I don't mind the skinnier body for Green Goblin. I think it kind of works. And then the other imperfection is the torso articulation. I do wish there was more range in those joints. But honestly, even with the limited range, this figure is a whole lot of fun to play around with it just has so much personality even though you can't get him into the craziest poses ever the poses you can get him into are a lot of fun because the figure i don't know something about it man it just has a lot of personality it's very bright and vibrant and colorful and it's just fun to handle and one thing too that kind of caught me by surprise is that the material that the soft goods are made out of are really durable so i've been playing with this figure a lot and i haven't had any fear of anything getting damaged so that's a good thing when it comes to mezco so yeah he doesn't have crazy articulation but what's there works for the figure and the personality of the figure kind of makes up for the lack of articulation because no matter what you're doing you're still having fun and then as far as like the design goes they absolutely killed it with the sculpts like the face sculpts to me are perfect i love them I think they did a good job with the effects, like the scale effects on the soft goods. And I like the colors, the bright green, the purple. The figure looks amazing to me. And also, it's going to be an insane display piece with like the glider and everything. I think all of that is really well done. The accessories are absolutely ridiculous. As I mentioned, the glider is awesome. All the different hands are great. The pumpkins, the throwing effects, all that stuff is cool. But the standout accessories for me are all the different heads. I love the goblin heads. I love the Norman Osborn heads all that stuff to me is extremely well done and perfectly executed so with the accessories as always mezco absolutely killed it there's a whole bunch of fun stuff in there and you know this figure is definitely one of those mezcos that is a lot better in hand than photos would lead you to believe you know i think that's the case a lot of times with their figures they don't necessarily photograph that well but once you get them in hand they're pretty impressive and that's the case with green goblin and not only was he impressive he got like better the more time I spent with it. So that is really dope. And yeah, man, I've got to say, I think this is probably the best six inch green goblin that's ever been released it's better than the hasbro ones i still have trouble putting it over the toy biz version because i'm always going to love that figure but i would say that the mezco version is the best green goblin available and yeah i think that they did a really good job with it and i love the way that it turned out and with that i think that's it thank you so much for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff also be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that i go live thank you very much peace